So long a letter originally published in French as Un si long le train by Senegalese author Mariama Ba in 1979 is a very personal book written as a series of letters. The book explores and tackles such sensitive issues such as patriarchy, motherhood, education, tradition, polygamy, sexism, and betrayal. Based in Dakar, Senegal, the story is written from the perspective of the main character known as Ramatoule, who writes a letter to her best friend Isa Tu, who is currently living in America. This is soon after the sudden death of her husband Modu Ba, who has died by a heart attack. Ramatoule writes the letter while she is going through a mandatory 4-month and 10-day mourning process that every new widow of the Muslim Senegalese culture must follow. Ramatoule reflects in her first letters by recalling and describing the deep negative emotions that flooded her mind at the time of the first few days after her husband's death and describes in detail about how he lost his life. During a traditional mandatory 40-day mourning period for women called Miras, how the funeral proceedings go on, whereby because of Senegalese Muslim customs, Ramatule is forced to host and serve all the mourners and well-wishers of her departed husband, opening a house to them and providing them with, with food and drink. This strikes Ramatule as a grave injustice because Modu, in his final years, treated her like trash and wanted nothing to do with her with her 12 children. To add insult to injury, the guests appear to bring gifts such as banknotes, which are given to Modo's second wife, Binetu, and a great mother. She then turns her attention to the love marriage life she shared with her husband from the beginning of their relationship where they were genuinely in love and never thought anything would come between them. She marries and gives all her loyalty and trust to Modu, despite her family's opinion that he is a deadbeat loser. Isa too, who also faces more or less the same issue as the daughter of a poor goldsmith who falls in love with an upper class son who practices medicine called Maudo. However, because of their contrasting social statuses, Maudo's family is against this courtship and his mother in particular, Auntie Nabu, who does everything in her power to sabotage the courtship through traditional means. Auntie Nabu emotionally manipulates Maudu to take a second wife. However, unlike her dear friend Isa too, who refuses to embrace this despite her husband's sincere pleas that he will only always love her, she divorces him, focuses on her education, receiving a degree in diplomacy, and moving to America to work in the Senegalese embassy. As for Ramatule, her marriage begins falling apart when her young daughter Daba befriends Binetu, who dates older, wealthier men nicknamed Cold Sugar Daddies who are older married men who are dated mainly for financial convenience. However, to Ramatule's utter shock and heartbreak, it eventually turns out that the main sugar daddy Binetu was running around with was her very own husband, Modu. This was after Binetu is forced by her parents to leave school so she can be taken care of by an older man who has money. She does so and is now said to be Modu's second wife and her co-wife. Ramatule is heartbroken to bits by this treachery. Modu continues anyway with the marriage and Ramatule again unlike her empowered friend Isa too decides to remain steadfast in the marriage which now feels more like a formal obligation rather than an actual marriage based on true love. She now stays for her children. When Modu dies, Ramatule must strangely handle this new strange oppressive situation of mourning a man who betrayed and abandoned it simply because it is a traditional norm. As, as her mirror draws to a close, she is approached by Tamzi, who proposes to marry her. Ramatule is deeply insulted by this rush proposal and rejects and even tells him off in front of Modu and, and the imam. Later on, another man, Dauda Dieng, also proposes to her. Though he does so with significantly more tact than Tamsie, Ramatule rejects him too. She now, with conviction, turns her attention to focus her efforts to continue raising her own 12 children who are left behind as an independent and empowered single mother. If you have an African novel you want to see Dudu summarize, do not hesitate to comment below. Don't forget to subscribe for more original great 
Afrocentric content like this. Thanks for watching Mimsy Dudu Summaries.